Okay, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar with MongoDB. So I'm Joel from E27, and I'm extremely happy to be here with you. But before we proceed, before we proceed with the webinar, uh, we just want to share with you a few house rules. So house rules is, you know, this is a webinar with a panel discussion, but as much as possible, we would like to invite you to join the discussion. You know, so feel free to use the chat box and, you know, feel free to express your concerns, questions, and share your insights about the discussion. Secondly, you know, we are opening the floor for your questions and feel free to type them also in the chat or in the Q&A portion of the Zoom uh, feature. And then lastly, uh, this webinar will be recorded and will be shared with you once the webinar has ended. Yeah, and before we, before I pass it on to our moderator for the day, um, we just want to share a quick question for you. So while we are waiting for the other people to join in, so what do you find to be the most difficult part of being a gaming startup? You know, I, I think this is a really interesting thing, you know, because entering the gaming startup, there are a lot of things that can happen. There are a lot of issues. There are a lot of setbacks that can come in. So I think we, we want to hear from you what would be, you know, in, in your side, what would be the hardest part? And if there are any options that are not within the options, feel free to send them also via chat. Yeah. And we will be waiting for the other audience to join in. So in the meantime, yeah, feel free to answer the poll. Thank you. Yep, okay, okay. Uh, once again, uh, hi everyone. So to just to those who just joined in, welcome to Game On with MongoDB. And we are so happy to be here with you. And yeah, uh, so recently we just launched a poll on what would be the most difficult part of being a gaming startup. But before we proceed, um, again, we just want to share this also with you. So feel free to join the discussion. We don't want this to be like a one-sided thing. We don't want to be, you know, um, be more part of the audience in audience engagement. Next is there will be a QA portion at the end, um, but it doesn't, you can start sending and sharing your questions in the chat and the q and function of Zoom. And lastly, the webinar is going to be recorded and we will be sharing this to you once the webinar has finished. So good afternoon, everyone. And before I pass it on to our, to our um, moderator, actually our moderator is an entrepreneur in residence in 917 Ventures, uh, Globe's corporate venture builder that ideates launches and accelerates new businesses that have the potential to grow and scale fast. Previously, he was a founder slash entrepreneur, investor and enabler, and mentor in the Philippines tech startup scene, and having started, exited, invested, and mentored numerous startups in the region. So please help me in welcoming our moderator for today, uh, Mr. Francis Simison. Hi, Francis. Thank you, Joel, for the warm introduction. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. And I hope you guys are ready for a very exciting talk today. Um, it's very, very interesting to understand what's really happening in this whole game development uh, field today. And with us today is two very big experts in this space. And, and I'm really excited to hear more about what they're going to say. So we have talks from William Tan, a senior solutions architect at MongoDB, as well as Dam Lei, tech lead at Optimistic. So they'll be talking more about their different presentations and they're gonna share a lot of insights today and they'll introduce themselves further so that they can give more justice than what I'm saying now. So guys, um, let's start off with William Tan and let's have him present first. Go ahead, William. All right, thanks. All right, thanks, Francis. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me well. And I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know, uh, Francis, can you see the screen well as well? Yep, yes, go ahead. Yes. Go yeah. ahead. Okay, very good, very good. So uh, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Um, very, very good afternoon. I hope no one is in another time zone like morning or evening. 
So thanks so much for uh, attending this very uh, quick session with us, uh, you know, um, uh, in MongoDB. And you know, we have Francis here who can share more later, I hope. And also uh, Dan, all right, my so-called favorite customer. <laughs> so uh, he will actually share a little bit more, you know, it, it go in depth into how he actually, uh, you know, support uh, his business via whatever that he's using, you know, from our MongoDB2 set. Okay, so again, my name is William Tan. I'm a practicing uh, SA or solution architect, we call it, right, in the team that's primarily covering around ASEAN and India. So today, essentially, if you see my screen right now, I'll be sharing on why MongoDB is the right choice uh, for gaming today, okay? So let's go. So this is a very nice slide I found, and uh, I think it tells all the story. So this is the, the, the whole history of uh, electronic gaming. So since the very beginning, you know, in the form of arcade, in the form of home console and PC gaming, I think the gaming industry, I think Dan can agree with me uh, on that, it has always grown very, very quickly. And it has gone so quickly that it, it can even rival, like, you know, or even outpace films and, you know, television, right? So when mobile gaming actually came into the picture, I think that's like the breaking point. So when mobile gaming actually comes in, it has become a real unstoppable trend so that people can play and game anywhere and everywhere. Right, I, I think um, that's something that I, even I myself, uh, you know, is participating. Right? So all this actually results in a very extremely fast growing quick market. And it's not exaggerating to say that the growth has been really exponential as you can see from this chart, right? It's just, the whole thing just grow and blew up, right? From the game industry perspective. So um, I'm very, very sure some of these names, if you look at it here, like Sega, like PlayStation, like Nintendo. So all these names are so familiar to you and I think it's probably part of our happy childhood memories as well. So these are just some of the major um, so-called gaming companies that runs on MongoDB in various platforms, right? So they run on MongoDB on Atmos Cloud, like our cloud database as a service. They run it on-premise, you know, to really uh, develop and, you know, roll out, deploy uh, the games, right, that they actually offer offer to the world, right? So these are just some of the brands. I, I couldn't put everything onto the same slide, but you, you, you get the picture, okay? So gaming itself is not really just about the game itself, right? Because I think gaming took on a different facet. Okay? So it actually evolved to become what we call a social behavior, right? So it's linking people worldwide, it's linking people across different countries, different cultures, different languages, even and races, right? I'm very sure you play another language game, right? Like for me, I play like, you know, Chinese games, Japanese game, especially Japanese games, right? So they come in a, a different language. I don't really understand them, but I enjoy the game so much. So the language doesn't really become a barrier. So all this has integrated very well into our social media platform as well. So today, because we game, we game before, we, we don't have a social media uh, platform to, to share the results, but today we do. So we share our results, we share our experience of gaming. You see a lot of posting here and there. And I think more important thing is that you, you build a community of gamers whereby, you know, they can actually, you know, uh, feel their ranking. They can put their performance of all the top players, you know, of all the different games around the world, right? And it has also become very seasonal. Seasonal, why? Because today we will have world-class level gaming competition that's held in various parts of the world. I'm sure you know about that. And we can actually view it sometimes online, you know, through various platforms like Facebook, like YouTube. You know, it can be viewed by online by many fans. And it's like millions of people are going on into that competition and seeing, you know, that competition happening right before their eyes. So in fact, gaming has actually become a sport, you know, on its own. And in recent times, I think the very interesting thing is that we continue to see gaming evolve. So gaming actually becomes like, uh, for example, it becomes part of this WHO, right? World Health Organization Initiative in collaboration, you know, with uh, all the top gaming industry players during this COVID-19 period. And there are actually actual sporting events, right? Because of COVID-19 that, you know, taking place, but, you know, cannot have the crowd, but they're actually tied to virtual fantasy gaming events. And the virtual fantasy gaming events, you can lock in, you can participate in them. There are millions of viewers and it actually broke all the participation records uh, that's been set uh, previously, right? Just for the, the sport or for the game itself. And recently, uh, I would just like to talk about Optivist a little bit here. You know, in the trends of blockchains and NFTs, that's where the NFT gaming actually developed. So, you know, we have uh, Dan here with us. Uh, later, he will, uh, he will share with you what uh, he's doing in Optivistic and, you know, all the experience uh, from the horse's mouth, okay? So, 
why MongoDB for games, right? So why is MongoDB uh, becoming a part of this gaming ecosystem that's so vibrant, that's so successful, and it's like, you know, ever evolving? Actually, there's really no magic to it. We didn't change our formulas. And it is only because I think MongoDB is able to address three principal or major challenges that any gaming companies would actually face, right? And they are agility, right? Availability and scalability, right? So agility is actually, uh, I can say, another name for development speed, right? It's how fast you develop. It's a drive to develop and to bring the games to market quickly, right? And you can react to trends and you can react to community feedback. So sometimes when you launch a game and there's a game going on, there are feedbacks you know, coming from our community, you know, like uh, some of the things that's happening in the game, how you play it, how you, you know, quantify it. And then you can really change uh, the game or improve the game, release the next few patches as quickly as possible. So that's agility. The other thing is availability. It's very simple to understand availability, right? So it's about live 24 by seven gaming experience, right? Without downtime even during maintenance, right? So you're maintaining your system in the back end, but the game continue. There are people who are logging into the game, right? Worldwide at different time zone playing the game at the same time when you are trying to maintain it. And last but not least, scalability. So scalability is again, very easy to understand. It's about scaling up, right? During like, for example, very large launches, especially for those AAA games, right? Um, and also for those post peak gradual scale back, right? So during launch, there could be a huge interest. Everybody is like uh, using the, the system. So you need to scale up, you know, for that peak. But later you'll come to, uh, you know, a stabilizing period. That's why you need to scale back and consolidate. So that's like, you know, part of the game life cycle is part of the evolution of any game, right? So, and because MongoDB is able to address all three, and I think that's why we are in the uh, gaming ecosystem, okay? So um, to, uh, okay, sorry. So I think in simple words, what I really want to say is, you know, game developers find a flexible um, document model that MongoDB provides, right? And, and it's a real, uh, like really a natural extension of what they are doing every day, right? So let's look closer. Exactly what does this statement mean when the game developers and the document model is actually a natural match, right? So the flexible document model that's behind, uh, you know, a MongoDB actually, change is having the ability to like you know change schema without actually any operational overheads of any relational schema upgrades right so it's able to enable like you know zero downtime you know for any code releases so you can think of it uh i would say a good example like a, a player profile right you, you normally store a player profile with like a player underscore id and you have a display name on the game and then you calculate maybe the total and the average of various stats and score of the game right so when you need to do that right there's no need at all Right, previously, right, you need to like denormalize the data. Now in MongoDB, you don't have to do that, right? And when you don't have to denormalize any uh, data, you actually means there's no joints. No joints really just means there's going to be improved performance. And when you actually change schemas, you know, for players, it is actually so easy. It's very quick to just change them and you know add new schemas or create new player identity. And finally, I think at the end of the day, this binary JSON objects, right? That's stored behind in uh, our databases, right? It actually tr is treated the same way as it is in the game code. So there's no additional translation involved, right? So whatever that you see on the object is used exactly in the game code, whatever it is, is written on the game code is the object itself. So it's very natural, it's very easy for like, you know, developers to quickly visualize, think about what kind of code they want to write, write it and, you know, um, it straight away connects to the database and pick up whatever it requires. So, and uh, to cater for different gaming, right? Uh, in different platforms and different devices, we all know we cannot just be like, you know, one language uh, expert, right? We need to have a variety of client drivers and all these client drivers actually is, you know, very, uh, you know, popular uh, programming languages and they are actually native you know, to MongoDB. So it's able to understand, it's able to manipulate data that's represented in the same uh, flexible document model that MongoDB actually supports, right? And all these features actually adds up and really helps uh, in terms of game development. And uh, to make the data really universal, right? Uh, whenever the games require the same game, but it deploys to various platform, the different uh, operating system, different devices. So the same document model must be able to support all kinds of uh, data format, right? So we, with all the support that you see, whether it's a JSON data format, key value data format, 
or even geospatial data where you have uh, all the latitude and longitude you know, uh, involved as well, you can actually uh, be part of the uh, MongoDB clusters and the database, right? So all these different, uh, then you can build all these different kind of like very sophisticated uh, gaming model, or you can develop very complex queries uh, within the game itself, right? So this is only possible when we are actually able to do that with this kind of flexible document model. And um, I think, how does gaming, uh, we have to ask our question, right? Uh, how does gaming uh, companies is able to leverage on MongoDB, right? For availability and for scalability. And just now we addressed something like agility, right? So I think for availability and scalability, we have to look at how our MongoDB Atlas, our database as a service really covers uh, across the whole globe. So today we are able to support like in more than 80 over regions across the globe. Right, we are able to run, uh, you know, across all the major uh, hyperscalers like uh, AWS, like Google Cloud, and Azure. Right, so it's not too much to say. In fact, it's true. Right, that Atlas is a true multi-cloud data platform. You can call it right, not just a database, uh, with the most advanced security and data distribution capabilities of any fully managed services. So, gaming companies could actually what they do is that they could actually start uh, the database cluster just in a matter of minutes. All right, and then they are able to grow them, scale them. And the most important thing is that they are able to leverage on intelligent automation tools to actually maintain the performance at scale, right? As the game actually evolves over the time. And uh, so let's say, let, let me just say and uh, give you an example. So for example, you might have chosen a Google Cloud, right? As your primary cloud providers. And that gives, you know, very good like global coverage to most of the gamers. But however, you might want to just expand the game outreach to gamers, you know, in certain region where Google Cloud might not offer a data center today. So what do you do, right? So then with the multi-cloud cluster on Atlas, right, that you can actually yeah, spin up, you know, in just a few clicks. Yeah, so actually, you could um, actually... I just joined the gaming, the NFT gaming just for six months. Yes, then. <laughs> Uh, them, them have some comments for me. Okay. Um, okay. So I think with the, the multi cloud uh, clusters on Atlas, in just a few clicks, right, you can actually extend to AWS or to Azure, right, data centers in those regions. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you don't have Google Cloud, your, your game can still be running on Google Cloud itself. Uh, but the, for those specific regions, you can quickly deploy the data and the apps, you know, to AWS or to Azure because those regions actually support it. And MongoDB Atlas can be there together with your apps itself. So. So this actually provides uh, you know, gamer with a truly native gaming experience, right? Because every game, I think um, being closest, you know, in terms of proximity to the gaming location is you know, very important in terms of the gaming experience and the performance. So this is what uh, MongoDB can really do, right? By being a truly uh, you know, multi-cloud uh, database. And um, I just want to spend just a little bit, a little bit more time, all right, to really talk about NFT gaming, right? So this is the, the, the newest trend in terms of gaming, and I want to take this opportunity to talk about how you know MongoDB and this NFT actually comes in together. So in the context of NFT gaming, especially, so MongoDB Atlas actually pairs up with the blockchain. I would say very seamlessly as a blockchain database, right? So the blockchain database itself, among in the Atlas itself, you store all the blockchain's ledgers. So there are always two kinds of data we are, we are talking about from the blockchain. One is the on-chain uh, on data. So the on-chain data contains all the like, you know, the transactions of all the uh, public and private blockchains. It contains the tokens and the NFTs, right? The non-fungible tokens, right? And on the off-chain data, right? It actually, you know, contains some things like, uh, you know, your gamer scores, your trades, your points, you know, your loyalties and so forth. And you might even need to connect to an external marketplace data, right? Or you need to store certain metadata of the asset that is inside the blockchain, but not in the blockchain. And you, you store them as off-chain data. So both on-chain and off-chain data you know, could be part of the data that you store uh, in MongoDB Atlas. All right, you get the idea. So um, the key strength, right? And the feature of blockchain, right? I think we all know, like for example, data immutability, right? So data is immutable. Second thing is that you have decentralized control, you have asset aut autonomy, right? So all these are the major features of blockchain. And this is the reason why, uh, you know, uh, various companies like even financial institutions, for example, right? They are uh, doing a lot of blockchain uh, within their technology stack, right? And all these things can be complemented by MongoDB because MongoDB is a high throughput 
it's a low latency, it's a high capacity database, you know, with full access control, with query capabilities, with search capabilities, even like free text search capabilities, right? And so, you know, this actually makes uh, Atlas or MongoDB Atlas a very good choice or a great choice as a blockchain database. And it offers a secure way, right, to store the data while it still provides a very easy way to query the data from the different transactions. I think that is something that uh, every NFT game or a great NFT game will require and can benefit from, okay? So an example of what it really mean, if I want to say, okay, what's a real life example of, you know, NFT, you know, what it meant for NFT gaming companies and their customers, right? Is that, for example, you can actually build now you know, a virtual wallet, right? And this virtual wallet can exist in the game itself, right? And it actually allows a, a customer to, you know, automatically manage all the assets and the NFTs, right? Which then can be used in different games, right? You can share in different games and you can also hide the details, you know, of, you know, which chain the asset is actually being stored or are being stored, right? So you just see whatever you have in the wallet and those are the things that you're playing, you know, uh, between different NFT games, right? So this is a very, um, I would say a real example of how some of our um, customers you know, are using uh, MongoDB Atlas, you know, for NFT gaming. And um, I would like to just uh, take um, uh, uh, an opportunity here to just like, you know, use this as a very high level uh, illustration. So this is a very high level architecture diagram, I say to illustrate the idea that I just spoke about. So this architecture diagram here actually shows how Atlas is actually being used, right, for both on-chain and off-chain data. Right, it's leveraging on very strong security features like your field level, uh, you know, encryption, like our key encryptions and so forth. So game developers, they can actually use the API to actually build application that connects to a marketplace even, right? And they can connect it because most marketplaces are sometimes using the OpenSea API, so we can actually talk to that. And then you can actually connect to game wallets as well, right? And Atlas, right? Uh, more than just being a database, it actually has, it is a, it's a, actually a data platform uh, that has all these capabilities and tools, you know, such as like free text search, right? And our free text search is actually based on Apache Lucene engine. And we have like GridFS, you know, for storing very large visual assets, right? So this whole uh, architecture just shows, you know, how this NFT gaming and blockchain and MongoDB can really come together, right? As an entire solution. So I hope you, you know, you kind of get the idea and can really understand that, right? And um, last but not least, this is really my last slide. I want to keep it like, very short and simple, right, to everyone. So to really uh, end my sharing today, I would just like to instill uh, this quote to everyone, which is, you know, let's build game, but not databases, right? Because I think the whole purpose of uh, MongoDB and Atlas is to actually provide this freedom, right, for game developers and camp companies, right, away from, you know, the heavy lifting that they need to do or they require out of the data platform so that, Game companies and you know, game developers, they can fully focus on what they do best, right? Which is to develop, uh, you know, the most exciting, the most fun, the most enjoyable game that all of us, you know, can engage and play today, right? So I think, um, yeah, with that, uh, I'll, 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 you know, thanks for uh, listening. And, uh, you know, I hope this whole session, you know, is very meaningful for you. And I would like to uh, pass it back to the moderator, okay? Thank you so much. Ooh, thank you, William. Uh, that was very insightful. And uh, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do type it in our Q&A part here in Zoom uh, so that uh, our panelists could answer it straight after. Uh, but before we go to the Q&A, let's jump on to Dam Lake, who will share more about uh, the NFT gaming, which is super interesting right now. Go ahead, Dam. Adam, you're on mute. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, so uh, thanks so much, uh, Francis and William, to introducing uh, me and also the Optimistic. So actually, I just uh, joining the game NFT just for six months. And uh, also, when uh, previously, I just like focus 100% for the application only so when i joining this project the preview project so i learned a lot of things about the nft and also about the gaming as well so after that so uh, this is the reason why i 
Today, I want to share about the NFT and how the NFT disrupts the gaming industry. Uh, after this one, maybe uh, you can imagine uh, one or two years later uh, what happened with the, the gaming industry for, for the world. Okay. So this is the, our project, uh, the plan versus undead. So uh, to start it, I just share you guys uh, a bit about some numbers, some achievement numbers, and also some information that uh, our game using on. So like this game is the NFT gaming. And so we, uh, we got 2 million active users after three months. Uh, we also have uh, 2,000, uh, 200,000 concurrent users. We're building the plain visit and that uh, on the BSC um, blockchain. So which is the, the Binance Smart Contract, um, Binance Smart Chain, okay? And we're using the MongoDB and AWS at the infrastructure. Also after Trace Smart, we're building the uh, factory chain. So we're building our own chain for, uh, for five or six game after the plane visit and it okay so this is the, the outline for, for for my presentation so we will go to the overview uh, a bit about um, what is the nft look like and the a bit about the benefit of the nft uh, the next one about the, the nft gaming uh, what is the nft gaming and how the is work okay and the last one is about the NFT gaming, how the NFT gaming changing the, uh, the gaming industry. This is the main one that I want to, to focus on today. Okay. So about the overview, uh, you guys uh, know that for the last year, we, we see many terms uh, about the NFT, like the metaverse, about the, the BSC, about the Ethereum, or many, many uh, applications that related to the NFT, right? And you see that NFT for now is applied for many, many in industries, uh, such as the, the insurance policy, uh, contracts, gaming, metaverse, uh, music, or the art as well, right? Many, many industry for now using the NFT. And we also see that the, the NFT will offer a lot of benefits that the, the traditional gaming doesn't, just like they're using the play to earn motor or the, the game asset the NFT model to allow the user uh, using the asset to play multiple games, right? Okay, so now um, what is the NFT gaming and how does it work? So you guys can see here, uh, the NFT will, uh, will have the core gameplay, right? NFT, just the, the, the game, right? So it should, be, it should have the core gameplay first. And then they have two more uh, items here about the tokenomics and the NFT asset. So if the traditional game want to uh, convert the, the traditional game to the NFT game, they need to understand more about, understand and research more about the tokenomics, how they control the tokenomics, how they balance the tokenomics as well. And also how uh, the, what is the, the asset that they want to choose to convert to the NFT. Okay, and for the user by uh, for the NFT game, they have two type user. The user just focus on play games and play and earn. It's the gamers, and uh, the second one is uh, trader and holder that uh, the player don't want to play game. They just uh, see the potential of the game, and potential of the token, and they they uh, invest the the money to the token only. They don't don't care about the, the gameplay. Let's see the trader and holders uh, user. Okay. Uh, so uh, for you guys to understand more, so I give you the, the, the real example uh, about our project. This is the plain visit and that. So we have the token here. Uh, token here is the PVU. Okay. Uh, some some project that have uh, one, some of us have two tokens. It depend on the tokenomic that they they want to build, and we have uh, the asset, the the NFT asset here. It's the plane and the lens. Okay, so user can buy the land from a system, and then trace uh, between the user. User can trade and get more money from the trading. Okay, 
when we used to have the entity asset, they can like play the game. For example, in here we have two mode. Uh, BVE mode will allow the user can farming the token. And for the PV, PVP mode, it's just like the user uh, battle each other, like the one versus one. And if you win, you got a token, something like that. So if you if you own the, the asset, so we can play many games around, around the asset. Okay. So uh, the main one here is uh, how the NFT gaming changing the industry, the game industry for one or two years later, right? So for now you see that um, for the, you know, for the uh, traditional gaming, so they, the model is play to win or pay to win. It's not earned uh, and it's not earned the, the, the money, right? But for the, the NFT gaming, uh, we change the model from play to win, pay to win to play to earn or pay to earn, right? Any user for now uh, when playing game NFT uh, also understand that they can earn the money for maybe short time or long time. It depends on the, the game, the game play is there, okay? So, um, so we have a uh, five keyword here. Uh, is present how the NFT changing the, the gaming industry. So the first one that I already mentioned, the, the, the biggest one is the, the play to earn models that user can can play and can earn or can they pay um, small money to, to earn the, the token, something like that. And the same one is the, the NFT give the ownership to the user. That means when user uh, own the, the NFT, uh, that means no one will own this NFT, right? So this is very benefit of the, the NFT, uh, NFT uh, blockchain. And the third one is about the game asset. So um, that means uh, for this one, that means uh, when user uh, take owner of the asset, they can play many games around, just like I already mentioned uh, previously. So the user can play many games around. Uh, like the PvP mode, like the PvP, or they can play another game if um, if if um, the um, the studio will build the game around the platform, around the asset, the NV asset, right? And also, uh, the user can do the NFT uh, staking. Staking here that means uh, user can push the, the NFT to um, to the lock to, to earn the, the token. It's just like this one, just like this one. You should put the, the NFT asset to, to farming. It's a passive income, right? And it's just like the, the NFT is taking. So we have uh, the, the fourth uh, key of the NFT gaming. And also we need to care about the NFT scam. So for now we have a lot of NFT scam in, in the world. You know, the, the, some studio that just care about the, the benefit, right? The, the profits, so they don't care about the user. So they just build the, the beautiful landing page and then they just launching and then they get money and then they scam, they, they, they run, it's something like that. So uh, if we, we cannot control the empty scam, so it will impact to the, the gaming industry for one or two years later. Okay. Okay, so this, this one is the last slide. Um, how the MongoDB have the PVU. It's why I mentioned for this one, because uh, uh, we have already mentioned a lot of uh, like benefits of the MongoDB, right? But um, from my view, so actually in the beginning, when I started the, the NFT project, actually I don't care much about the database. I just choosing the one that easy for you first, right? And easy to change the, the view or something like that, and, and also easy to scale. But when I'm running uh, after one or two weeks, we have uh, around 10,000 concurrent users and we got a lot of issues uh, related to the database. Uh, but uh, the reason be uh, because we don't know how to using the MongoDB correctly, not, uh, not the reason uh, because of the MongoDB itself. So after that, we, uh, we book um, one section, one training section with the, uh, the expert from the MongoDB and they, uh, they teach us how to improve, how to like, uh, make it more scalable. So after that, um, after one month, so we uh, scale from the 
10,000 concurrent, 10,000 uh, concurrent uh, user to 200,000 200, concurrent user. That's a big chain, right? Okay. So this is uh, my last slide for my presentation. I hope that you guys can like uh, learn um, more about how the NFT look like and amazing uh, the game industry after one or two years or five years. Thanks so much. Hey Dan, that was a very interesting insight and uh, thank you for sharing the story. Mm -hmm. uh, so before we proceed to the Q&A that you guys are posting, uh, we'll probably do a panel discussion first and discuss a bit more because uh, I really want to understand more about the different things that they've shared today. So very quickly, I'll, I'll go through William first and then let's jump to them after. What are the new trends in the industry that you know companies should keep an eye on? And any specific trend that you guys are interested in? William, maybe you can start um, off. Yeah, so I think if um, for gaming itself, I think the most recent trend is definitely what uh, Dan had just spoken about, definitely NFT. Um, but I think um, growing beyond that, it would be the rest of the gaming companies. I think the gaming companies has grown with us for a long time. Uh, not to say that I knew all their histories, but they started with MongoDB, for example, in, in the very early days where, you know, maybe Atlas is not even present. That means that we don't have a cloud solution yet. They started on-prem. And, you know, their game really, you know, increased both in terms of complexities, graphic requirements, uh, and in terms of the number of players, and of course the devices itself, right? So I think that will still continue to grow. I think that's a definitive trend. And um, I'm seeing more and more gaming elements coming around from non-gaming companies as well. Uh, why do I say that? Like, for example, certain financial institutions, like, they might want to play certain games or make rewards point, you know, part of the game to gain more rewards point and so forth, right? It's part of their marketing as well and you know getting a value added as well and, it, and you can see like you know um you know companies that's doing payments uh companies that's like uh, grab and honestly you know, they, they might want to have like you know gaming elements as well that's actually part of the the, the whole story so i think like what i've mentioned in my slide itself it's become it's becoming like a sports plus a social behavior so gaming is not something like you know only for kids or you know <laughs> for people who want to spend their time away in, in, in holidays and things like that. It's actually meant for everybody, right? From old to, from, from young to old, you know, and uh, they can all be part of the same, um, you, know, you know, experience. Yeah, so I think, yeah, just very generally in a very short span of time. Yeah, those are the trends that we actually see. Yeah, yeah thank you, uh, William. How about you, Dan, like, you know, given that uh, William just mentioned NFTs, maybe you can share more about, you know, what specific thing are you looking at? Mm, yeah, so as soon as you guys know that the, the NFT is a uh, top chain for now for the game. Uh, you, you guys hear a term about the metaverse, right? Or uh, the, the XC game is very like the, the big game uh, or many, many uh, game for now uh, for the NFT. Uh, but uh, actually for the, the NFT is not like stable for now. Uh, maybe uh, for the game not just uh, launching maybe it's uh, go fast uh, just one month but go down just uh, half a month right so it uh, it you know, for now it's uh, in in the i mean in the the time that we need to optimize the game for for a long time it's uh, it's not for just one month or two months right this must be in the long term like one year two year or in 10 years something like that yeah and i think for the top chain is uh, the metaverse it's term metaverse Will be the, the top trend in next month, uh, next year. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely, I've seen the, the, the one you presented earlier. The growth was immense and it was crazy uh, how you yeah, guys yeah. up in just a short time. Mm. Uh, I guess my next question here is you know, with this changing gaming environment, right? Do, do you have any tips for starting? Because earlier we had the poll, and there's two key things that people mentioned. Uh, one was that they couldn't find the right talent, and the other one was particularly on game development. So maybe you guys have tips on how they can resolve these matters. Uh, maybe let's start off with them first and then circle back to William after. Yeah, so let me confirm question. So like you care about how to building the, the, the team, right? About the talent, right? Yeah, those two key problems that they mentioned earlier, it was particularly talents and game development. So either one that, you know, how do you help them in keeping up with those uh, issues? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, I just swear about my, my project, actually. Actually, when I'm building the, the team, we just have uh, five people in the part-time. 
to touch five people and uh, I don't have any knowledge in the NFT uh, in the beginning, but uh, we have uh, one smart people, like expert people in the NFT. And we have the expert people in the, the arc, like building the, the arc of the game, right? And also we have uh, the backend uh, people, uh, front end people. That means we have uh, built the key team in the beginning. Uh, but we uh, we start with the debug time of Stanford. And after we launching uh, about one or two months and we got a bit of benefit uh, profit. So we moved to the full time. It's uh, one way to build a team, right? Um, if you have uh, like the team, like the company already, so we have another way. Uh, just like uh, if you start thing with the, the NFT game, you can like um, provide the, the token in the beginning, not only the, the full salary, something like that to, to engage the people. It also another the, the way to build a team, right? And for the, the game development, actually, um, it's the band, uh, I think. To answer the question is too hard, right? Uh, because uh, for actually for the building the game is uh, we also need to build the whole team, right? The the the, the need to, to build the, the any position that required to build the game, right? And for the process, it depends. If for example, in, in in our company, we don't have any process for for building the game. It depends on each team. For example, uh, some some team using the Zira something using the Java, it's depend on the team. And we, we try to focus on the performance of uh, uh, go the fast way, trying to launch in the game uh, fast and with a high performance, right? It's the key point. Understood, understood. Yeah. How about you, William? What's your tips? Yeah, here? well, not to repeat what Dem has just said. I think what he <laughs> mentioned is very real. It's very true. I think. Uh, you know, on the human talent part, it's really key. I think what MongoDB is trying to do is to help them retain and, you know, grow that uh, talent pool that they have. I think, um, you know, all the things that I think Dan has said, right? For example, multiple languages, you, you can't find a single person that's able to code, like say seven or eight languages, but maybe one or two, right? But what MongoDB did is that, like, just like my client driver slides, right? Like, you know, it's, it's a whole suite of, uh, you know, application languages, you know, it covers from PC game all the way to mobile on, on, on iOS and Android, you know, platform and things like that. So all these different languages enables, you know, companies like, you know, Optimistic or like them, you know, to build with Steam and tell his, his developers, feel free to code in something that you are most familiar with. And you have the ease of, you know, assessing to databases and, you know, building that code, right? And if you are on a new language, again, the same experience, the same, same like, you know, usage of the client drivers are there and you can leverage on your previous experience of game building as well. So I think that is something that we are supporting from behind, right? In terms of that talent tool, right? And on the, uh, you know, changing environment and game development, I think, okay, it's, it's a bit interesting to hear that because I think one of the most exciting conversations I had with them is when he's telling me, I'm so busy. I have no time to talk to you because I'm going to launch my game. I'm really very stressful, right? So I'm not. I'm not enjoying. <laughs> I'm not enjoying his, uh, you know, trying periods. What I'm trying to say is that when someone tells you that he has, you know, something that big coming on, you feel excited for him. And the best assurance that you can go behind his back is, you know, beside delivering food and, 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 and beer and stuff like that is, you know, what can you put on the table for him so that he can sleep just a few more hours peacefully, right, at night? And I think that's where uh, Atlas is actually trying to do for him. I think at the end of the day, I think uh, every game launches or every major release of, uh, you know, some games, especially NFTs, are so difficult to prepare, right? I think from uh, them perspective is that you can do all the load testing that he wants, right? On Atlas beforehand, you can test his codes, you can get a whole pool of uh, developers all not going home, sitting in front, standing by, but nothing beats the excitement and adrenaline rush, right? Of that, you know, launch at that night. So, so I think it is also very difficult. I think uh, to be very honest, like, you know, he's trying to scale it gradually, but gradual scaling might not work for him. He just required that spike. So what we are trying to offer him is a platform that can, you know, give him that kind of agility, right? The kind of scalability and availability that I talked about so that he can reach that height. And then after, after one or two weeks when the game actually settled down, right? And the players are all logging in at different times. They're not all coming in and playing at the same time and things like that. That's why you can spread out the load and you can do some scaling better and consolidation as well. And then you will work on the next phases of this game uh, and the next releases and the features that you want to put in, into his game to excite you know, gamers some more. So I think 
that's where you know we specifically is trying to help uh, you know gaming startups you know or you know across this whole excitement but i think the um, the real honor all, all goes to us. I, we feel very happy and very proud that we are doing the real work, right? Uh, supporting, uh, you know, and like what I mentioned, right? I, I want them to build games, not databases. Leave the databases to us in MongoDB. We have a whole team of experts, right? To support them with the best databases platform. Yeah. Yeah, I like the fact that, uh, you know, there's there's food and beer <laughs> going to that for yeah. a stressful period. So uh, oh, that's man. great. And aside from everything else, of course, that MongoDB provides, right? So I guess my next question now goes into, you know, why should startups focus on building games, not a database? And, and this goes to your endpoint earlier, William. So I'd, I'd like to, to perhaps start on this one. Right. So I think um, it's it's really, you know, what a database should be, right? So I think a database is always a component or database platform or an application platform is always a supportive component of any business, right? So they, they, they could be running IT as a business or they could be running gaming as a business which require very strong IT support. So I think the best, most successful database company is one, in my own opinion, right? Don't quote me, but in my own opinion, is one that is not only excelling in our own database technology, but actually enabling our customers to excel you know, in whatever that, that they are doing. So for gaming, gaming, uh, you know, uh, uh, sector, you know, for someone optimistic and then, for example, if he wrote the best game in the world and his game become the most popular game in the world, I think that's the real statement and honor to us in MongoDB. It means that our technology really works, right? It helped them through a difficult period and it let them enjoy the fruit of their success. So I think, yeah, that's, that's the whole meaning of, you know, building games on database, yeah. Cool. Uh, how about you, uh, Dan? Like, what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, uh, as uh, as seven staff until now. Yeah, so, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Me? You like? Yeah, you're good. Go no ahead. worries. Hello. Yeah. Okay. I think I lost. No. Go ahead. We can hear you. Can you guys hear me, uh, Francis? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. Mm, yep, yep, yep. So like, uh, I already have a lot of experience uh, training a lot of startup until now. So I see that uh, uh, for the staff, we care about the, the, the product and for the for game, we care about the game. So just like if uh, and the third party or the, another team can like handle the, the DevOps or the database, so we we don't want to, to care about that so just, we just care about the, the product itself or the game itself right uh, to move the the product faster so the reason why in the beginning i uh, don't care about the the moon will be actually i just care the the one that the one that is easy to use uh, in the beginning and it's easy to scale that's it for, for, for us and after maybe one or two months i see that uh, we will uh, adapt uh, our case, use case so i move forward if not, we will change the database to another one. That's it. Makes sense, right? Cool, cool. So I guess my last question goes to William. And this is your thoughts on going mobile first. Oh, OK. Uh, interesting. So I think for mobile gaming, all right, uh, well, my experience is that you know everything is good when there's a good Wi-Fi and good network. Agree? All right. So what happens when there's no Wi-Fi and there's no network? You can't even access, you can't even access your login, right? You can't even log into the game itself. So I think where MongoDB comes from is that we have uh, a mobile platform, a mobile database to support, and it's called RAM, right? And it's there in Atlas, right? From a backend, you know, database as a service perspective. And you have an offline database that can sit on your mobile devices, regardless whether it's iOS, Android, or whatever, right? That can actually, you know, store certain critical transactional info or game info, for example, on the device. So that whenever the network is up again, and when you're reconnected back, you know, you, the, the, the game data can sync back all the way to our Atlas backend, right? For that purpose. So it is called uh, MongoDB RAM, right? So RAM is, um, you know, something like a mobile mobile edition, right, of uh, what MongoDB is really about. And it has a lot of uh, other features like triggers. You can, you know, talk on GraphQL and, and stuff like that, right? So it really enables, right, all the mobile uh, developers to develop their mobile gaming. And we will extend whatever that we have, you know, from a document model to Realm itself. 
So the same like driver support, uh, the same kind of experience you're using, you know, on MongoDB Atlas is also there for, um, you know, for, 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 the, for the Realm users or for mobile database users. So for offline situation and for any situation at all. So I think we do have um, quite a good story to tell. Uh, we do have existing customer really leveraging on that, you know, as part of their mission critical mobile application, including gaming. So I think it's uh, about how to connect in the future to have more conversation around that. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I have so much more questions, but let's jump on to the audience questions, right? So I think we've received some questions coming from the registration. And I'll jump on to William first, because uh, this is particularly for MongoDB. Uh, what games, if any, are using MongoDB? Yeah, yeah, I kind of show that slide. Um, so person asking this question, if you can remember my slide showing the gaming company. So uh, those gaming companies are using MongoDB, right, for their game data. So uh, the games that's written by those companies will be that answer that you want, yeah. Cool, okay. And then for the next one, we have what, what are the most popular blockchain tech solutions for NFT games use? Yeah, Mr. Okay. Me, right? uh, yeah. Or, Damn, you, yeah, you can take that. Oh, out you you guys go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so actually, uh, for the blockchain, um, uh, in, in our team, we just think the, we, we, uh, we hear about the smart contract and the web uh, 3 yes, we just think three, uh, two terms here. So the smart contract is a like a small uh, program that deployed to the blockchain. So any like the NFT asset or the token, also the, the smart contract, uh, everything uh, the generation in the in the blockchain that we need to the, the contract, right? It's called the smart contract. And for for the uh, interaction with the smart contract, we have seen the web trees yet. Yeah, this is my answer for this one. Sure, uh, William, do you have inputs on this one, or shall we jump on to the next one? Oh, I think we can jump on to the next few questions. I see quite a fair bit, so we'll try and cover them. Okay, yeah, we'll try to cover everything. So yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, a really beginner to the game development stuff. So I want to ask, what actually is MongoDB? Is it a database or something else? So I guess yeah, William. So <laughs> yeah, MongoDB always started off with that, you know, no SQL, general purpose database, you know, that everybody knows. So yeah, it continues to be like that and more. So today, MongoDB is really an application uh, development platform, right? Because it has ability to do search, you know, we can do archival, we can do data lakes and uh, many, many other things as well, right? So it's become that. So I think for any starters today, you know, go to mongodb.com. There's a way that you can register for a free account. Free account gives you free credits on free tiers and feel free to like uh, use our M0, M2, M5 tiers, you know, spin up any way you want in AWS, in Azure, in Google Cloud Platform and, you know, start uh, using uh, the, 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 the Atlas database, right? And then start, you know, choosing your favorite language. Maybe it's Node.js, maybe it's Python or something like that, you know, and then start connecting to it and playing around. Yeah, I think that would be a very good place to start, right? From, from development, especially game development. Yeah. Cool, yeah. So this question, the next question is quite interesting. It could be from two different perspectives, right? So can you tell us what's the most difficult part when choosing a database for a gaming application. So okay. maybe, I William, you want to start off? Uh, yeah, I'll start off very quickly because I'll give this uh, honor to them. I think them will be the best person to answer this, right? Being MongoDB, you asked me what's the most difficult part. I will sell everything that's good about MongoDB. But I think, okay, in my own opinion, the most difficult part of choosing a database for gaming application is how to have a database that allows you to start very easily, right? Without a fret but still have the complexity that you can deal with uh, when the game grows and scale. More, I think most of the time when we choose as databases, we have like either a lot of problems starting, we can start very, very well, and we stumble upon that, or we can start very well, but when we scale, we actually hit uh, you know, a roadblock straight away. So I think MongoDB does give uh, you know, our customers a very good uh, offer. Again, I'm a bit selling here, but it's true, <laughs> right? MongoDB does give our customers yeah. that kind of flexibility to enjoy starting and then scaling up it. And as I said, then what's your thought on this? Go ahead. Yeah, I totally uh, agree with the, the William. Uh, actually, in the beginning, when we starting the project, uh, a lot of things unknown, right? We don't know the, the few of the, the, the NFT asset, or we don't know the, the few that in the, the user, uh, for example. So we, uh, we need the, the database that very easy for us to, to modify the schema, something like that. And 
also easy for us to start in the beginning. Uh, so that is the reason why we're choosing the MongoDB uh, for some project in, in our team. Yeah. Cool. So hopefully that clarifies that part. Um, next question, can we convert old stamps into NFT asset? Yes, the, the, the answer is yes. <laughs> We like uh, um, it's mean that we they they want to uh, convert uh, the traditional NFT games and the channel game to the NFT game, right? So we to, the first step we need to understand about the, the NFT first and need to have the knowledge in the, the um, like the, the blockchain as well. And after that, we have the step by step to moving uh, the NFT asset, uh, the NFT uh, from the traditional to the NFT asset. Cool. Okay. Next question. NFT games have many ups and downs. What have been your key learnings that you can share with other NFT game companies? I guess this is more for them. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, um, uh, for PVG, for plain version of that, uh, it's go too fast in the beginning. You see, uh, just one or two weeks, we got uh, 10,000 uh, user, And one, uh, after one month, we have uh, two... Uh, hundreds thousand users and the reason why uh, it's go too fast so it down too fast as well so we need to uh, build the, the system that a bit stable in the beginning not like go too fast like that it's uh, maybe it it under control right so we need to to build the ecosystem that I uh, it's mean that the tokenomic that I already said uh, maybe using one or two token not only using one something like that in just like AC do uh, this for now, using two, two token. And we also try to optimize uh, the, the, um, the, the gameplay, the core gameplay, so that uh, user invest more uh, instead of they, they withdraw the, 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 the money more, something like that. Yeah. Cool. OK. Um, we can jump on to the next question. Uh, I guess this is more for William. What advantage can MongoDB provide compared to other types of database in the NFT game field? Yeah, I think this, this is a good question. I think um, first line to start off is not every database is created equal, right? Uh, not uh, every NoSQL database is equal as well. I think where MongoDB really do very well is again, our document model. There's no way to uh, run away from that, right? The way that we represent data in our format the way that we use our aggregation pipeline to query those data and get the results that we want. So from a blockchain perspective, right, we can create blockchains, you know, directly on the data, on, on the database itself, you know, and it's easily visualized over JSON, right? We can see what is the hash, what's the pre-hash, what's the hash that leads to the next one. So the whole chain of blocks, right, can be actually linked up. And we know that the problem of blockchain is that whenever you need to do a query on blockchain, it gets very cumbersome because of the entire audit law or that history, right? So in order to do that, that's where MongoDB complements that blockchain, right? By having the blockchain on the MongoDB itself because we, our, our document model, the way that we query is so powerful and so fast, right? So that we can actually complement that uh, with blockchain very easily. So I think, yeah, that's really a very, very clear advantage why MongoDB can be that blockchain databases of choice. And it's all, I would say, um, recognized by a lot of developers as well, because the developers are the one that's closest to the blockchains, uh, whatever they're using the blockchains for. Yeah. Sure, sure. And then next question, could you explain the NFT staking one more time? I guess this is for them. Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the NFT staking uh, is mean that um, just like we have the, the NFT asset and we want to earn the, the token uh, passively, so we just like put the, the NFT to the uh, the lock uh, platform, uh, just like if you uh, like just like the, the farming uh, mode in the PVU, we just put the, the NFT to the the land, and after a period of time we earn the token, something like that. So the platform the platform try to keep the keep user uh, uh, to to uh, to 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 keep the the, the NFT uh, to earn the token. So, so like uh, uh, the this is the, the the NFT staking. Not sure it's answer the question. Yep, I think that answers it. And I guess the next one is for you again. Uh, them, could you uh, is NFT games a zero sum game? Zero sum. It means that someone has to lose for someone to win. 
sorry, I still cannot get the question. If it's, uh, it, you know, like if for you to win, someone has to lose. Is it is NFT like that? Or maybe William, could you jump in on this one? Yeah, so I think maybe I can just help them, uh, you know, kind of like explain the question a little bit, right? So zero sum game means that if I win like, you know, uh, 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 ten dollars or ten tokens. Someone has to lose the ten tokens mm -hmm. in order for me to win ten, right? So at the end of the day, it's a zero sum game for everybody. So it's yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah. I, I think this is that correct. true. Yeah, yeah it's mm -hmm. that true. That's true. That's true for now. But um, maybe in the future we have uh, we should have some uh, other way to uh, to get more money uh, for the to the boon. So it's just like we advertise uh, to another product like. Uh, advertise the to uh, like the Sopi or the the MongoDB something like that, right? To get more money to the pool, so that the, the the user can get the money from the pool, uh, not only from uh, other user, something like that, right? But for now, it's 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 correct. Cool. Okay, and I guess last question we can accommodate, and the rest perhaps would be answered uh, on another time. Uh, MongoDB has a strong track record of developing quality games, but how can you prepare for this whole new way of building games now that perhaps the most important aspect of the game is a sustainable economy? Is that something that MongoDB can assist games with? I guess this is for William. Well, I think this is a very interesting but difficult question, right? So <laughs> touch on the aspect of sustainability, especially from an economic aspect, but uh, let me just give my own personal thoughts on that, right? So I think um, in terms of, of, of gaming and how it, uh, you know, actually leverages on technology, especially on cloud today, I think it will continue to be evolved. So I think where MongoDB really plays from a database or from a data platform perspective is to, you know, be in sync with the gaming uh, world uh, in terms of what they require and what they need. And in terms of what the game developers are really thinking, I think we have very strong developer advocate. We have very strong uh, messaging around, you know, uh, uh, um, development, uh, uh, development languages, or, you know, the way that uh, developers are working with uh, their codes today, right? And that's like a very profound impact to gaming, the way I look at it, right? So obviously, like what Dan mentioned, you know, in his uh, previous few minutes, that's, you know, before that was that, you know, creativity does play another part. So there must be someone who is creative enough to think about the concept and things like that. Then someone who is great and fantastic to code it, you know, and put it down, you know, into a physical form or into a game form, right? So I think where we are coming from, from that perspective is um, to, to have a very strong um, so-called listening ear or in the market, not, not just from the gaming companies, but also from the gamers and especially from the developers, right? So that we can actually help them to build, um, you know, whatever game and whatever new platform that is coming up. So it could, it could be, I don't know, maybe in future, we might do so much more on virtual reality than what it is today, right? And gaming companies might have a VR version of almost everything, I don't know, all right? And it ties with NFT and, and more, but uh, what does that mean for the developers and what kind of tools and platform that they need to make them successful? I think um, in, my, in my, own, my own way, that's like, you know, making it, trying to make it more sustainable, right? Trying to adapt to the changes, uh, not just thinking about costs, right? More thinking about, you know, how to get it done uh, in a very agile, in a very uh, rapid manner. That makes sense for our business as well. So, yeah, I hope that can be a, an answer. <laughs> a good answer. Oh, that was a very good answer for a very difficult question. <laughs> We have one more question that just uh, got inserted. So the last one, the totally last one is, if I am a total beginner and want to enter game development scene, how would I start my journey? It would be interesting Damn, to hear uh, from both perspectives. <laughs> Interview uh, with them. <laughs> Optimistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, just Let like me, me uh, I, be I begin the, the game development, just zero uh, knowledge. Just like have the knowledge in the different fields, like the, the building the, the application. So we need to have the another people, the, the expert people that working with you, right? So like the the NFT expert or the the game backend expert or front end expert or Unity experts like that to build a team. Yeah. 
first and then we start the, the, the channel something like that yeah cool how about you william your thoughts on here on this one well if you um okay my, my chip trick is go google <laughs> game development mongodb and you get all the answers right and yeah it's, it's really true uh, there are games, some, there are some like, you know, even uh, doing blockchains, you know, on Node.js, for example, it's part of YouTube, you know, where uh, many videos that teach you how to do that. You go to Git, man, and go to GitHub and you can do a search, right? There are many uh, free codes uh, running around with our client drivers, you know, with our languages that actually uses MongoDB for some very simple games. So I think those are a few quick uh, and dirty platforms to start with, right? But most importantly, go sign up on MongoDB, you know, get to the free tier, you know, and you know, start from there. <laughs> All right. So I guess that wraps up the Q and A. Uh, maybe some closing statements from both of you before we uh, wrap up. Um, okay. Maybe I'll start first. Yeah, I'll give them the uh, the the yeah the last uh, you know person make their final speech. So I think for me again, um, I just want to uh, encourage everybody to come reach out to us for more questions and dialogue. I think that's very important. Uh, whatever you hear today might be a little bit on a high level side because just to cater for uh, a bigger audience, right? But if you have very specific needs and requirement on a, on a database platform or something that you always want to do, you know, from in your own uh, work or company, you know, do come and have a chat with us. Uh, we're always reachable and available and then we can drill down into the details. Uh, like what I say, we have a, a huge team. MongoDB is a it's a fantastic company. It has lots of uh, passionate uh, developers and uh, people who really knew uh, the business and databases and, and all that stuff. So uh, very eager to get on a call and have a, have a great conversation with you to, so that it makes sense. Yeah. So that's what I want to say. Thank you so much for your time today, everybody. Yeah. So to you, Dan. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for me, so uh, thanks so much, everyone, to joining the, the webinar today. So actually for me, uh, if you guys want to uh, start in the, the NFT game, so just take action for now because uh, the NFT game for now is very important. So, and you need to uh, move fast before it's, it's go to the stable, right? So go with your idea, go with your team, and then like take action to like transfer from the traditional game to the NFT game or start a new NFT game as well. Yeah, thanks so much everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, William and, and Dam. You know, truly appreciate your insights. Uh, it's very interesting to learn from the experts, you know, hearing you guys talk about the different things that someone would need, right, to get into this game development scene. Yeah. So I guess uh, just to conclude, um, we I think MongoDB has offered something interesting. So $100 credit, just scan the QR code, and if you're really, really good, William might send you some food and beer, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> so... Guys, please do try it out um, and check it out and see you know, how this uh, flies to your game development companies. And hopefully you find the right database for you uh, for your next game. All right, and that wraps up. Thanks again, everyone, for attending and see you guys again soon.